All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to yet another virtual Children's Church lesson. My name is Miss Rachel, and as you know, many of you have been joining me here in my house in Margate, Florida. And maybe for some of you, it's beautiful outside. What's the weather like outside your window this morning? Rain. For us, what's the weather like, Lincoln? Do you see the sun outside our window? Yeah. Really? Yeah. What do you hear outside our window? Raining. It's raining. Yes. I can't see the sun. Maybe Lincoln sees the sun because Lincoln's so sunny. But right now it's very gray outside and it's raining. What's it like where you're watching? Is the sun out? Is it cool or breezy? Spring is here and we're going to be talking about spring today and different animals and creatures or insects that we see. Maybe you've noticed our background in my classroom is a little bit different today. Well, as I said, you're here in my classroom and I am a teacher for kids in China. I teach them English. Every morning when I wake up, I teach two to three children over in China. And I'm also the children's ministry director at First Presbyterian Church in Coral Springs, Florida, just the city right next to us. I have four boys. One, if you've been watching, you already know this, Henry sleeps during this time. So we can stay a little bit more focused because Henry just turned two the other day. So we are celebrating his two-year-old birthday. And if you have a two-year-old brother or sister, or you know a two-year-old, you might know they're kind of loud and distracting. So Henry takes his nap during this time. I also have three other boys. They're gonna come up now and introduce themselves to you. They're with us every lesson. I'm Christopher, I'm Tanner. And what's your name? Lincoln. Say it louder. Lincoln. Lincoln, this is Lincoln. And Lincoln, how old are you this week? Lincoln had his four-year-old birthday last Sunday we sang to him and it was very special so they're gonna go have their seat for a little bit and with us this morning is my husband mr. Andy who films every Sunday I encouraged him to introduce himself but I'm not sure that's gonna happen this week maybe next week this week we are going to also be hearing from my mom each week miss Susan who is a children's church teacher at Boca Glades Baptist Church. Each week, she sends us a video message. And Miss Susan prays with us and sings with us and also tells us what we're going to be learning about today. So let's hear what Miss Susan has to say today. She gives us a beautiful message every Sunday. Hello, boys and girls. I sure miss you. I know I say that every Sunday, but it's true. I miss seeing my class and learning about the Lord and singing songs. But the church is not a building, but the people that are inside the building. So I'm so thankful that God has given us technology during these days that we can still worship together. Our lesson this Sunday is about ladybugs and how they can serve a garden. The Bible tells us in Galatians 5.13b, but by love serve one another. How many of you have ever picked up a ladybug? Were you afraid of it? Ladybugs kind of tickle when they walk on your arm. Now, last year my class got to let live ladybugs crawl on their arms and then they let them go on our church grounds. Mr. Sal and I were supposed to pick up some live ladybugs today so you could see them out on my lawn, but we couldn't find any ladybugs in Florida. Miss Rachel will tell you about that later. Now, a little bit about ladybugs. Ladybugs can crawl, they can fly, they eat, they sleep, they have wings, they have six legs, they have eyes, they have antenna. Ladybugs are bugs. They're harmless. They're hard. Their shell is hard. And they are little. And they also go out and they help a garden or um, plants by eating all the things that are bad in there. 
So, today in our lesson, we will learn all about ladybugs, but first, we are going to sing a song called What a Mighty God We Serve. So everybody stand up so we can exercise our arms and get all our wiggles out before Miss Rachel teaches our lesson. Now, our song has five hand motions that go with the song. And the words say, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Now, Miss Susan is old, so I may mess up those hand motions. <laughs> So please follow Mr. Ra Miss Rachel and the boys when we sing it. All right, here we go. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we Serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Great job, boys and girls. Thank you, boys. So please let us know if you have something that you would like us to pray for. I asked our grandsons, Kenny and Christopher, that what they would like to pray for. Kenny asked us to pray for Mrs. Trainer and Uncle Mark's cancer. He also asked that we pray for Graham and Graham and Granny and Grandma and Grandpa Holt and that they would all be able to have visitors soon. And he also asked us to pray for everyone in the world that is sick. Christopher asked us to pray for God to help everyone in the world that is not sick to stay healthy and strong and to help Uncle Mark with his cancer. I have a praise. Uncle Mark just finished his last chemo treatment. He had to do 12 of them, and he just finished the last one. So we're going to praise the Lord for that. And we're also going to um, thank the Lord. Tomorrow we celebrate Memorial Day, and that's a time to remember all the men and women who served and fought and died for our country. So at this time, our hands we fold, our head we bow, it's time to talk to God right now. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, we, for you have made it. Dear Lord, I thank you for Mr. Nick, who's taping us. I thank you for Mr. Andy, who is taping Miss Rachel and the boys. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving us your son, who died on the cross for all our sins, and that we live to get today, Lord, for you. Dear Lord, I pray for Kenny's request. I pray for Mrs. Trainer and I pray for Uncle Mark and their cancer. You are the greatest doctor in the whole universe, dear Lord, and we just pray for them, and we pray for everyone that's sick, and we pray for Graham and Gramps, and we pray for Granny and Grandma and Grandpa Holtz, and all the grandmas and grandpas and great-grandma and grandpas and abuelos that are out there, dear Lord, that you just let them know how much we all love and miss them. Dear Lord, we pray for Christopher's prayer request. We lift up everyone that is healthy, dear Lord, and we just ask for continued health for them, for only you can do that. And dear Lord, we also praise your mighty name for Uncle Mark's cancer struggles and the journey that he's been on. And we thank you, dear Lord, that you have been with him every step of the way. And dear Lord, we just lift up our pastors, dear Lord, all over this country and this world that are making decisions. We pray for those decisions and we pray for our pastors. And dear Lord, we thank you for our families. And at this time, we also pray and remember all the men and women, dear Lord, that have served our country and that have we have lost. We thank you for this day and I thank you for the, all the boys and girls all over the country. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls. Enjoy Miss Rachel's lesson, and maybe someday I'll be able to get live ladybugs, and I will show them to you on tape. Bye. Thank you, Miss Susan, for that beautiful message for us this morning. We also take time to, like she said, get the wiggles out a little bit, and we are going to sing another song. This is a song we've been singing for the last four weeks. 
and it's called I'm Trusting You, God. So please stand up and join us as we sing I'm Trusting You, God. I'm going to have Christopher and Kenny join us again. Here we go. to see what's next. I want to face this world with wonder and excitement. Face every challenge, every day. Wherever you lead me, I'm going to follow. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. Life will get crazy, wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. will get crazy, wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. The valleys climb mountains high, wherever you go, Lord, you are good. Can't hold me back now, I'm gonna fly. Wherever you go, Lord, you are good. Walk through the valleys, climb mountains high, Wherever you go, Lord, you are good. Can't hold me back now, I'm gonna fly. Wherever you go, Lord, you are good. I want to live each day like anything can happen. Can hardly wait to see what's next. I want to face this world with wonder and excitement. Face every challenge, every test. Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. Life will get crazy, wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. Wherever you lead me, I'm gonna follow. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. Life will get crazy, wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. I'm trusting you, God, you are good. All right. Thank you, boys, for joining with me. Are you awake? Are you ready? Is your body ready to quiet down and read God's word with me? If you don't have your Bible already, I encourage you to go grab it. And while you are getting your Bible ready, Miss Rachel will get our story ready. I am so excited to be reading about ladybugs with you today. So many times where we live in Florida, we don't see a whole lot of ladybugs. And we're going to learn about why in just a little bit when we read our story. But you might be thinking, why are we talking about ladybugs and the Bible? And this is an important part because God created each creature, even each insect, with a purpose. Did God create you boys with a purpose? Yes. Yes? yes? No. Lincoln, God created you with a purpose. Oh, yeah. Yes, God created you in his image. Did he create a ladybug in his image? Yeah. No. No, a ladybug was not created in God's image. We as humans are special. We are the only creation God made that was beautifully crafted in his image. Now, when you have your Bible ready, 
I encourage you to turn to Galatians. That is in the New Testament. Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to read starting in verse 13. This chapter, beginning of verse 5, beginning of chapter 5, excuse me, is about the freedom we have in Christ. Now that freedom is talking about that we are free from sin. Because, like I said, when we were created in God's image, who were the first people that God created? Christopher. Me, 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 me. Um, Eve, Adam and Eve. Good, Adam and Eve. Were Adam and Eve perfect their whole lives? Me. Lincoln. <laughs> Kenny, were Adam and Eve perfect? No. no, they were not perfect. They sinned. They sinned. But part of God's plan was to send Jesus to this earth as a man to die on the cross for our sins and then to free us from that. So here we are reading a, the book of Galatians and we are reading a letter. Now, this is written by Paul, and Paul says, You, my brothers, were called to be free. Do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we are so thankful here in Florida for this rainy gray day. Lord, we pray as we stay inside our homes today, that we can open up your word, Lord, that these would indeed be your words and not mine, that we can use your creation and something as small and little as a ladybug to teach us how we can serve others for your glory, not to be focused on ourselves and in our own sin, but instead to find those around us or even far away from us that we can serve in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now, I love this book. Miss Susan found this book and started this ladybug lesson with her kids at Boca Glades Baptist Church. And I am going to read it to you. I have it on the screen behind me and just kind of like a little animated um, story. It'll flip through so you can see the pictures a little bit better while I read them to you, just in case you can't see my story here. Let's begin. Vidalia, the helpful ladybug. This was written and illustrated by Carolyn Warble. You can find Vidalia, the helpful ladybug, on Danielle's Place. That's daniellesplace.com and it was provided by Digital by Design. Isn't she so cute? I just love the color of ladybugs. Vidalia was a clumsy little ladybug with a big heart. She lived in the outback of Australia with her family. Is Australia in America? No. No. It's it's, yes, it's a whole nother continent, a whole different country. She tried hard to follow God's teachings and to be helpful, but no matter how hard she tried, things just didn't seem to work out the way she wanted them to. One day, Vidalia's mom asked her to clean up while she went out looking for food. Vidalia was excited to help. I will have it cleaned up by the time you get back, Mum. Just be careful, Vidalia, warned her mum. Hooroo! She yelled as she flew away. Vidalia got right to work, but she was so eager to help that she forgot about the ripped leaf in the living room. When she backed up, she fell head over heels and landed on the ground with her feet straight up in the air. Poor Vidalia. Oh my, now I'm up a gum tree, cried Vidalia. She tried to right herself, but it was no use. She was stuck tight in the strong grass. She would just have to wait until her mom came home to help her out. But for now, at least she could take a nap. Ooh. 
That night, Vidalia's mom asked her why she looked so sad. Vidalia cried. Mom, every time I try to be helpful, I just mess things up. I really want to be helpful. Vidalia, I know you are doing your best, and God knows you are doing your best too. That is all he wants from you. God has a plan for your life. He made you for a purpose says right here in the Bible. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. This made Vidalia feel a little better. Vidalia, when you have a problem, you can ask God to help you, her mom reminded her. Vidalia closed her eyes and prayed, dear God, Please help me to be helpful and find a way to help others. Amen. The next morning, on her way to school, Vidalia flew over a newspaper. The words, farmers need help, caught her eye. This made Vidalia very curious. She flew back and read the rest of the article. It said that the citrus trees in California were dying because the cottony cushion scale insects were eating the trees. Ladybugs love cottony cushion scales. It was Vidalia's favorite food. She read further. The article said that the Australian government offered to send some of their ladybugs to the farmers to help them save the trees. Vidalia was so excited. She thought, finally, something that I can do to help. After school, she flew straight home as fast as she could. When she saw her mom, she showed her the newspaper article and said, look, mom, I found something I can do to help. The farmers really need us in California. Can we go and help them? Vidalia's mom smiled and said, I saw that article last night and I thought it would be a great way for you and our family to be helpful. We will be leaving for California tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Trying to get to the end here. Vidalia, her family, her mates, and hundreds of other ladybugs left the land down under to go help the farmers in California. Within two years, the ladybugs had eaten enough cottony cushion scale to save the farmer's trees. Today, Vidalia's ancestors are still hard at work helping the farmers. The end. Boys and girls, do you see how beautiful God created ladybugs and all of creation? To think there is a type of ladybug that their job is to eat this insect called what? Cottony cushion scales. I had never even heard of them before we started this lesson. But they are little insects that will eat the plants and the crops in California. And farmers are so frustrated with them. And instead of using harmful chemicals and sprays on their plants, they found that there was a design in nature to take care of that. Even people that don't know God may be able to realize through nature, through ladybugs, that there was a design and a purpose, just like Vidalia's mom tells her. God created us with a purpose, just like Paul tells the people in his letter to them and their church, rather serve one another in love. Part of our purpose is to serve others, just as Jesus served us by dying on the cross for our sins. Vidalia found her purpose. Did you know that right now, here on the East Coast where we live in Florida, why Miss Susan couldn't find any ladybugs? Because in California, they're having a hard time gathering them to sell. And where did they get them from California in the beginning? Australia. Yeah, from Australia. It's so amazing to me how God uses his creation in so many unique ways that trickles down to us here in Florida. 
isn't it amazing how God created the world to all work together, to serve each other? I just love that story so much, and I hope you loved it too. And when you think of how to serve one another, you can think of Vidalia the Little Ladybug and how badly she wanted to be helpful and to serve others. And maybe when you're at home right now and you say, well, I don't know how I can help other people if I'm not seeing them, Miss Rachel, I'm not going out, I don't, I'm not at my church, how can I help other people? What do you think? What are some way bo ways, boys, that we could help other people? <laughs> I'm going to start with Kenny and then I'll go to Lincoln, okay? Kenny, what's a way we can help someone else from inside our house? Um, what's something you can do for those grandmas and grandpas or for the elderly? Write a note. Write a note. We can write letters. Send, send candy. Ooh, send candy, okay? Send, send candy. Food. Or send food. We like to take our candy from Halloween and we send it to our troops that serve us overseas, that serve our country. We can't eat all that Halloween candy, so every Halloween we box it up and we send it off to the men and women that serve our country. And maybe it'll bring them a smile since they're not celebrating Halloween with their families. Christopher? Yes, writing when those notes. Go when they can't see us and they can't go anywhere. That's right. We, writing notes is a great thing. Drawings, those two. Lincoln, what's a way that you can help other people? Give them candy. Give them candy. Okay, well, maybe at home you can think of some creative ways that you can serve other people right from inside your house. And starting with a letter or a drawing is a great way to serve others. Well, today for our craft and our activity, we are going to be giving ourselves those reminders. Lincoln, you wanna come join me on this side? Boys, you can bring your stools over. Yep, come over here, bud. First up, we have our handout, and you can find this on my Facebook page. And this is, we print it um, front and back, and it says serve one another with our little ladybugs that you can color. Then on the inside, there's a color by number and a bug picture matching to draw a line from each picture on the left to the matching picture on the right. And on the back is little Vidalia, and it says, I can help others, but by love serve one another with our verse from today. So I'm going to have the boys start coloring that for me, please. I will get the crayons. I tried to put all the reds at the top, guys, and a black. You might need the brown. Oh, we're not going to staple just yet, Lincoln. I'll show you what we're going to staple in a minute. Can you color the ladybugs red? Oh. Now, our next activity that you can do is very simple to do together. This is also in the Google Drive link that you can click on in my Facebook page. And we're going to make little ladybug crowns. The way I stapled mine, it's kind of popping up my little circles. But there you go. And so I started one. Go ahead. That's okay. Yes, you're going to make a face in the O. Well, I started cutting one out for you. When you print them out, you're going to get two on one page. So maybe make one for you and one for your sibling, um, maybe a mom or a dad, a grandma or a grandpa. And you'll see why I encourage you to wear it in just a little bit with our second activity. But you're going to print them out. And I cut out all of these circles already. So you'll need the printable here. You're going to need scissors and you'll need glue sticks and crayons or markers, colored pencils, whatever you have at home. You can cut out your crown using your scissors. I like to print the crown on cardstock. It's just a little bit sturdier. If you don't have cardstock, that is okay. Just printing it out on regular printer paper. And if you don't have a printer, then maybe I encourage you to find Lincoln. We don't play with staples or staplers because we can get boo-boos. And you would be screaming. So I'm gonna put that here, okay? Can you color these little circles for me? And then you're going to glue them on your crown in just a second. 
Go ahead. Can you color one for me? Okay, well then just stand there if you want, or you can color your sheet. If you open it up, you can find the insects to match. Can I have is two red or is it orange? I think it's red, honey. I just think it's a little hard with our printer. And as I said, if you don't have if you don't have a printer at home, then I encourage you to get a piece of paper and some crayons or colored pencils, and you can draw your own ladybug crown. And you'll see how to make a crown in just a second. I'll show you. Lincoln, can you glue the circles here for me? Go ahead. Take your glue stick and glue on the crown. Now, I take an extra blank sheet of cardstock. And the boys know I call hamburger and hot dog folds. We're going to do a hot dog fold, like a hot dog bun, this way. I fold it in half once, and then I'm going to line it up again. Another hot dog fold, like this. So now I kind of have like a fan when I open it up. And you can cut it into four strips. And then if you see my crown, I stapled the strips around with the front of my ladybug crown here. I probably should have gone in a little bit more so that way my circles didn't pop open off the crown. But you live and you learn, right? So here is my ladybug crown. Now. I encourage you to wear your ladybug crown when you do this next activity. I was hoping we were going to get to go outside and do this today, but the fun part about this is you can also do this indoors, even though it says outdoor scavenger hunt. <laughs> this is a ladybug color hunt. So what you're going to do is also print this off and you are going to go outside. Maybe today you have beautiful weather and you want to get go outside and take advantage of that. I encourage you to get your family, grab your outdoor scavenger hunt, and go hunting for the colors that you see outside. Maybe you find a green leaf, and then maybe you find a pink flower and a brown piece of mulch or some dirt. Think of different things that you can find outside in nature that will match. Now, what's so cool is we have boys and girls that watch from all over the country like Cole in Minnesota, my nieces and nephews, like Declan and Tatum and Emery in Iowa, and Annie and Jane and Kate and Maggie in Pennsylvania. Then we have some more family in New York, like Carly and James, and even down here in South Florida, our friends like Isabella and Julia, Jeannie and Cash, and whoever is watching. What's so cool about this is when we talk about God's design in nature, what you find here in Florida is not going to be the same that you find in Iowa or New York or Pennsylvania. So everyone's ladybug scavenger hunt is going to look different. So if you go out, wear your crown, take your sheet, and then please snap a picture. And I would love for you to share it with us so we can all see the different things in nature that God designed in the different parts of our country. Yes, Christopher. I don't know what this color for is. I think Mommy. it's supposed to be pink. Mommy. It's You can make it whatever you want the flower to be. Mommy, did it. Okay. You did it. Good job, Lincoln. All right. Well, we are going to close in prayer. Lincoln, do you have a prayer request that you would like me to pray for? Is there something or someone you would like to pray for? Graham. Graham? Yeah, for you. Oh, and for me? Well, thank you. Well, let's go before the Lord. Boys, let's pray to close out, okay? Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for this lesson, for what you've done in nature, God, in your design, the way you created the world, that we can look all around us and find lessons that you give us, Lord, that we can find the truths in the Bible are the same as the truths in nature, Father, in your creation. Thank you for Vidalia the ladybug and for teaching us that we should have a heart to serve one another. Thank you for the book of Galatians and for what Paul wrote to us, Lord, that we serve one another in love. And I pray for the boys and girls in their homes right now that they can find ways to serve one another. I thank you for the men and women in our country, Lord, that serve us, Father God, that serve us to give us the freedom to have these live lessons on Facebook, Lord. And, for, and most importantly, I thank you for your son, Jesus, who served us through his sacrifice on the cross, Lord. 
by giving us the opportunity, Lord, to be free from sin. And Father God, I just pray that you can be with us for the rest of today. May we serve you, Lord, in love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful Sunday.